Hello, in this video we're going to write a simple implementation of how to use a loop to find the maximum value of a list in Python 3. Now before I begin I just want to actually talk about a really common mistake that students will run into. And it's one of those kind of insidious errors that kind of rears its head and it's hard to see. It turns out with Python 3 you can find the maximum value in a list using a built-in function which is pretty great. And that is we can use the max function. So I could do something like print max list. And incredibly, when I run this, it does it all for me. There's my maximum, 73. This is pretty great. Um, use it. But it's important to understand how to look at each element sequ sequentially to find the maximum or minimum. Because you're not always going to have a function to do it for you. And when you go into other languages, this max function doesn't exist. Just really quickly, this also works for min. And I run. And there's my min. Now, what students often do is they do this. And then they go max equals max bracket list. This is what students will sometimes do, is they will first initialize initialize max to first element, right? Which is perfect. Um, and then what they do is they use the max function. But this actually presents a bit of a problem because if I run this now I get this kind of error. And this error is, is popping up because you've actually declared a variable called max. Because there's a variable called max within this, this program now it doesn't view this as a function anymore. It actually looks and it says what's the most immediate max that I have? And that is this one right here. So What's important is don't use the don't use the don't use the variable max. Um, use the variable max val because then it knows that we're going to use the function max. And if I run this, oh, let's print it out. Print max val. Give this a run. No problem. Okay, that's one of those little insidious errors that kind of pops up that sometimes is hard to see. But that said. What I'm really interested in is, is making sure you understand how to find the maximum value using a loop. So to do this, I'm going to look at each element sequentially, and I'm going to make an, a, an assessment to look if that element is larger than the, the largest element I've seen to date. So we're going to write a simple for i in range loop. I know there are other types of loops to look at lists, but I typically use this for i in range at this stage because I think it's easier to transfer your knowledge from Python to Java by doing this. But that said, don't, don't hesitate to go look at other loop structures in Python. For in range 0, the length of list. We always have Python calculate the length of the list for us. We never actually type in the, the numerical value. That means if we change the length, it's not an issue. And I'm going to say if maxval is less than list at i max val is equal to listed i. There you go. So and we can get rid of this line now down here. So essentially what I'm going to do is this is going to loop through every element. I'm going to check if my current max val is less than listed i and if that's the case I'm going to reassign max val with listed i. And if I run this, hopefully this runs okay. Oh, I don't see my console for some reason. Let's just pause. Part of me, that was one of those cases where my window was minimized and I couldn't find it. There it is. So if I run this now, you'll see that sure enough it finds the maximum value. Just a couple little points along the way. So first thing is that students often don't do this and I wouldn't recommend doing this. What I would actually do is I would just say maxval is equal to and I would take advantage of that max function because I can use that max function and compare two elements. So I can compare the current max val against listed i. That's another nice way to do it. It works perfectly fine. If I was to find the minimum value, um, we can do that. Let's say min val equals list at zero. So again, we're going to initialize the minimum value to the first element. This is really important. Um, if we don't do this, we can run into some problems, and I'll show that in a second. And then all I do here is I say min val equals min min val comma listed i. And if I come down here, print min val. And let's be a little bit clearer on this. Max 
comma, min, comma. There we go. So now, let's zoom out so we can see all of it. If I run this, beautiful, there we go. Max is 73, min is 1. Okay, before I kind of sign off here, let's simulate a really common mistake. And this is the common mistake. You know, often when students are learning this technique, they've become so used to initializing their variables to zero, they do that without thinking. But what you'll notice here is that if I run this, the max value still works, but the minimum doesn't work anymore. The reason why the minimum isn't working is because I've initialized minimum to zero. I've initialized it to something smaller than any other element in the list. So therefore, it actually never gets overwritten. So by initializing your maximum min value to, to some arbitrary number that you've picked, you're, you're somewhat limited. For example, I could say to you that this list is only going to contain numbers between 0 and 100, in which case you could you could initialize min value to 1,000 and you could initialize max value to negative 1. This would work, but that would work assuming that that range is known. And if I run this, sure enough it does. Because I know that there's going to be no, there has to be a value less than 1,000. I know there has to be a value greater than negative 1. But not, this isn't ideal. I don't always know what the range of values are on my list. So the way we get around this is we initialize the first element to the max, sorry, we initialize the max value and the min value to the very first element in the list. We can initialize it to any element in the list, but by doing this, we don't need to know anything about the range of values that are contained. I hope this video helped. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask.